Hello again. Thank you for joining me. Today we have another story about the elven woman from before, Agneta DeVoe. This is a tale from her early years, when she first came to the city of Varadun. Unfortunately for us, Agneta was unable to make it today, so she won't be joining me in telling this story. Hello. Hope I'm not late again. Oh, you made it. Yep, I made it. Back to make sure you're telling the story right. Now, where to start? The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, Episode 2, Enemies in High Places. A few weeks after the troll encounter, things were going grand. Word had started to spread, and my business of an all-in-one, whatever you need, was beginning to pick up. Now, for those who've forgotten, I'm Agneta, the sepia-skinned elf with frizzy black hair, and, at least at the time in my life this story took place, a rather eccentric dress style. Oh, and I suppose the clashing mismatch of period fashions you're wearing now in this day and age is far from eccentric. Oi! Shut it, you! On the seventh day of the week, five weeks after the troll on the farm, I ventured to the city markets with my best friend, Termel. He's a human with a pale complexion, and at that time a junior politician for the Varadun City Council. He had long brown hair and a ponytail and side curls, and on that day he was dressed in a fancy red velvet coat and grey suit. The weather was cool despite the sun shining bright on the bustling city street, which was empty of the usual carriage traffic and lined with market stalls, selling fresh vegetables and meats or other goods like clothing and home decor. So, you're shopping for anything in particular? Hmm? Oh, maybe. You know how it is. I'm just out for a browse. I was thinking of getting a new rug for my living room. The old one was a little ruined. It's picked up some nasty stains. Oh, yeah? Oh, check out those ones. Those are nice. They're dwarven in design too. Very modern. They are. They're a little pricey for me, though. That reminds me, actually. And yet, there was something I wanted to ask your opinion on. And yet... We had headed down the street a little more and I spotted a trader that stood out from all the others. An elf woman, tall and lean with light freckled skin and dark red-brown hair, styled in an elegant knot tucked neatly behind her pointed ears. Her dress was lush, floor-length, mimicking the popular on-trend human fashion of the time, but coloured in elvish greens, like those of the forests and fields out of the city. Good morning. Morning. She smiled widely as Termel and I expected her wares. Among the elvish herbs and bottled potions were an assortment of carved wooden items, from little figurines to cooking utensils, and most interestingly, canes, clubs and other weapons, all beautifully crafted and intricately patterned. Who makes all of these? Oh, these are all my work, besides the herbs, of course. I just picked those. The work on these is gorgeous. Agreed. The detail is amazing. Oh, thank you. How much for this black telescoping club? Twenty pounds for that one. Really? Oh, bargain. You're going to hit someone with that, aren't you? Perhaps so. I'm Agneta, by the way. Hello, I'm Termel. Merelda, pleased to meet you both. Your work is wicked. Have you had much luck selling here? Kind of. My work has been viewed as curiosities by most, so there's been a bit of admiring, just not a whole lot of selling. You're Monerish, aren't you? I am. I would have thought you were too, with the way you're dressed. Like you've not quite figured out the human fashions. If I might butt in, how were you dressed? It was just my standard outfit. My grey coat, purple pants, my black boots. Nothing weird. Oh no, the masculine outfit you wore at a time when most women wore dresses wasn't weird in the slightest. Uh, for the listeners who might not know, what is a Minerish? Right, um, Minerish are elves. That's their name in their tongue. An elven culture outside of human society. Mostly untouched. Good, now we're all caught up. Back to the story. Minerish, no, not me. Born and bred with humans from way up north. Have you been here in the city long? I've been here a few weeks. I come to this market on Sunday and I spend the rest of the week minding a stall at the market the street over. The clan leader sends a few of us out to trade goods and services at the village and cities and try to strengthen ties with, well... Oh, nice. How's that been going? Merelda paused. Many expressions passed over her face as she tried to find the right words. I take the bad with the good and try not to let the negative stuff bother me. What kind of negative stuff? How long have you been here in Varadun? About two years. Why's that? Are some of the people, you know, abusive? In what way? Uh, calls from across the street, theft, vandalism. Who are these people? I don't know. Humans. They kick over my signs, my table. A few nights ago, there were a few of them in masks. Probably the same people as before. They had clubs and started smashing some of my stuff up, and one of them grabbed me until I pushed him off. 
As Merelda shared this story, my blood began to boil. I'd not experienced anything like this myself, not at this level. It kind of sounded like racketeering or extortion techniques. Were they asking you for anything? Money or your goods? No, they were just trying to smash things. Have you contacted the city guard? I did. The number of guards in the area increased in the following days, and there's not been anything else since. That's good, but it does mean whoever is responsible is still out there. Merelda, I'd like to help you. You would? You would? Yeah. I'm something of a freelance detective. I could try hunting these people down if you wanted. Do you have a description of the ones harassing you? The ones without the masks? Um, sure thing. They were human. Men. One of them was doing the catcalling. He was tall, slim, he had short red hair and a beard. Um, pointy nose. The other... Oh. What is it? The one who stole one of my ornaments and kicked my sign. He was with the ginger one. He had blonde shoulder-length hair with a round face and a black spot on his neck. He was shorter, more solidly built. He had stubby fingers, too. His fingernails cut close. I got a good look at those while he looked over my goods. I think it might have been those two that wore the masks a few nights ago. Perfect. I'll keep a lookout for you, see if I can figure out what's going on. And thank you again for this lovely club. No, thank you. So, you're a private investigator now. And yet, are you sure about this? I don't want you to get hurt. The only person you should worry about getting hurt are the scumbags behind this. But I'll be careful, don't worry. You are kind of taking the law into your own hands here. No, I'm kind of going to take the law beyond what it's capable of. The city guards don't have the time or resources to be hunting something they deem to be a petty crime, because that's all that really is to them. Really? Oh yeah, unless some assault or theft like this happens right in front of them, they don't care. They're thinking if they place guards around the area the assault happened, it'll stop. And it will, mostly, unless the person committing the crime is particularly rash or stupid. And so later the guards will disperse. And I guarantee the second they do, the scum will be back. Is this because Merelda is an elf? Because she's being harassed, or because the guards aren't taking it further, or because I'm helping her? (laughs) All three, mate. Well, I suppose I'd better let you get to it. I'm afraid I have to run off now. No worries, you said you had to earlier. Oh, sorry, yeah, um, what was it that you wanted to talk to me about before we spoke to Merelda? It can wait, no matter. Good luck. Stay safe. You too. So it began. The impossible task. To scour the mean streets. To search a major capital city for two unidentified men and armed with only their basic description in a city of 20,000. Excuse me, I'm looking for a tall ginger guy and a short blonde dude. Oh, that'd be Terran and Cole you're looking for. They live just down the street over, number 43. (laughs) Thank you very much. I don't believe you. There is no way, absolutely no way, that it was that quick and easy to find the exact people you were looking for, especially using such a basic description. And so I headed to the street over and quickly found number 43. Hi, I call in Taranin. No, they're not. Who's asking? I'm a friend of theirs from work. I'm surprised they'd have any friends of that job of theirs, considering how little time they spend there. And I'm even more surprised that Dumfries hasn't given them the sack yet. I'm as surprised as you are, honestly. It's why I'm looking for them, actually. Any idea where they might be? Well, we're either down the pub... Which pub is that? At the Crow's Head. Oh, yes, I'm familiar with it. Uh, They're either down there or at the carriage warehouse just down the street on Potter's Lane. Uh, They're not in trouble, are they? No, no, just need to deliver them a message is all. Thank you for your time, ma'am. From the house to the pub, it was a 20-minute walk to the city's east by the river. The Crow's Head pub was small, clad in wood and painted black, and a quick glance inside revealed there was no one in but the barmaid and a few old men having a morning drink. I headed down the road and spotted the carriage warehouse to Potter's Lane, and as I got closer, I heard the voices of two young men drifting out of a painted green carriage door. Honestly, I had no cash on me at all. I had to fight this guy for another bottle. Really? For real. Only took a single punch to the gut, but I managed to floor him. The big gorilla. <laughs> he was easily six foot two, at least. Can you show the brooms? Well, no. Nah. I've wrapped it in bandages. I tried slipping in through the door, but found my path blocked by two horses hitched to a stagecoach. From what I could make out inside was a skylight on the ceiling. I quickly made my way up to the roof by a drain pipe next to the door and identified the two men I was looking for sitting by a workbench. Opening the skylight, I jumped down into the workshop in front of them. Hello there. Oi, who are you? Sorry, seems I took a wrong turn. You came in through the skylight. You'd be surprised how often that happens. Get out or I'll mash you. What do I look like, a potato? Are you looking for teeth in a basket? Why are you offering yours? Don't hurt me. 
Whatever you want, I'll do it. You've been harassing that lady in the market, the elf. I ain't saying nothing. Right then, we're going to be difficult, are we? I picked him up under the arms, one by one, and hauled him into the stagecoach. You're going to regret this, yeah? Oh, my days, what are you going to do to me? What, what, what do you want from me? I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want, is to find out what your motive is for harassing innocent market traders. But first, we're going to go for a little ride. I locked him in, clambered aboard and drove the stagecoach out of the workshop and back home to the Vestiment Silver Tavern in the city centre. Morning, Charlotte. How were the markets? They were something... something successful. Was that you in the stagecoach parked around the back? It was. You didn't buy that, did you? The coach? Oh, no, I'm just borrowing that for a little bit. Could I use the cold storage room for a bit? Use it how? Let me out, you stupid elf! You may. Ta. Um, another thing. Could you please send a pigeon to Termel? I need him to visit and pick something up on the way over here. Yes, of course. Anything else? Tea? Cake? A part of my liver? The two had regained some of their consciousness on the ride over, but it was still rather easy to shove them both into the pub's cold storage room and lock them in. You locked them in the fridge. Yes. Now, when Termel... Two men. In the fridge. I locked two nasty boys in the fridge. When Termel arrived about 40 minutes later, he had Morelda with him. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Your market stuff is all safe, isn't it? Yeah, I have it locked away in my room at the tavern I'm staying at. Oh, good. If you'd like to follow Charlotte here through to the tea room at back, there's something I wanted to share with you. Right this way. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. It's Merelda. Merelda Aronham. Did you get me that pardon? One diplomatic immunity for most moderate crimes for you. If I was prone to worrying, I'd worry that's the only reason you kept me around. Of course not, dude. You're great. As are you. Has there been a development? Quite a significant one. I found them. Really? How'd you manage that so quickly? You ain't gonna believe this. I literally just asked the first person I saw, and they knew them, and where they lived, and I followed the trail. I swear, the people in this town can be far too friendly and trustworthy with information like that. What'd you do with them? I locked them in the fridge until you two got here. Are they still alive? I hope so. They've been very quiet. Just need Morelda to identify them and get a confession, though they pretty much gave that away when I caught them. Then you just have to hand them over to the city guard and hopefully you don't go down for imprisoning them in the fridge. It's citizen's arrest, isn't it? Something like that anyway. I just hope this isn't too confronting for Morelda either, being face to face with them. I probably should have thought this through a little better. You're here now, you have your pardon. I say you continue down this path you chose. Best not keep her waiting any longer. And then Dad shot him. So that was the end of that relationship. I think our fathers have that in common. Something happened. Yes, I managed to find the two who've been harassing you. I just need you to identify them before we take them to the city guards. Where are they? In the fridge. I'll bring them in. Is this normal for you or her? More for Agneta. The number of people locked in places has certainly increased since I've known her. But no, this isn't how humans tend to live. Carl Jewett and Tehran Hall. Are these the scumbags who've been causing you grief? The near my dad. Sit, or I'll do it again. What did you do to them? They got a little violent when I found him. Your lovely club came in handy. Was it them? Yes, that's them. Look, we'll tell you what happened, all right? And what did happen? Why were you harassing her? We ain't saying nothing, you filthy elven. Shut your stupid face, Cole, and your stupid tough act. We were paid, we were, to harass her. And any other elf business person in the city we saw... I don't know who by. He looked like some politician. I didn't recognise him, though. A politician? Yeah. A few weeks ago, he approached us at some pub with the offer and the cash. Hundred quid each, straight up. And then what? Anything. Slurs, theft, assault. Try and scare him off. Who else did you harass? A few others. Some down by the docks. He paid weekly. What did he look like? Old. M- maybe 60s. Had the most boring face ever. Grey and hair under that stupid silver wig. I don't know, a green coat. And what else? Did he speak? Right posho. Boring as. I looked at Termel, and I could tell from his expression he knew who the thug was talking about. I took him back to the fridge, locked him in and returned to the tea room. And they did all that just for a bit of money. Can I get you another tea? Green, please. Lord Peter Grantham. That's who he's talking about. Honestly, don't think I can say I'm surprised, but at the same time... Where do you think Grantham is now? He'd be at Parliament House. It'll be lunchtime soon. Off we go then. You all right, Merelda? No, I'm not. I mean, you assaulted and kidnapped those two men and locked them in a fridge. Well, it was self-defence, and it was either the fridge or the shed, but the fridge has the lock on it. Just, you can't just do things like that. It's not right. 
I say that all the time and yet she persists. I did this for you. You assaulted two people for me? They assaulted you first, stole your goods, kicked your table over, attacked you last night wearing masks. Who knows what else they would have done? And why did they do it, hey? For money. They were paid to do it. I'm sorry. I'm doing this out of the goodness of my heart, standing up for you, doing what's right, and you're excusing them? I'm not excusing them. You can't just go around beating people up. Two wrongs don't make a right. If only life were that simple. You can't just stand by when things like this are happening and you have a chance to do something. In my opinion, in situations like this, you fight fire with fire. Or ice scenes, I locked them in the fridge. They did something horrible, and so did I, but at least I had good reason. If you think them doing those things to you and others just because you're different and what I did to them at anywhere on the same level, then you really need a long, hard think about that. I'm, I'm sorry, I just... I'm not used to this. Of course you're right, they're in the wrong. This Lord Grantham is too. I just... I don't want to cause any trouble. I don't want you to get in trouble over me. So all I ask is that you... keep your club to yourself. Be better than them. I'll try, hey? I'll see you later. Termel, I need your eyes. Let's see if we can find this, Grantham. Termel and I caught a carriage to the city riverfront, where the grand marble structure of Parliament House stood, up from the smelly industrial area I visited earlier that day. We sat in the lay-by, peering out the carriage windows before we spotted our guide, Lord Grantham, standing out the front grass, deep in conversation with some of his peers and young women. Grantham is an interesting fellow. He's been in the government for well over 30 years. He's practically part of the Parliament House's furniture mostly because he sits around all day and does nothing at all. Other politicians are proactive. They stand for something. They change with the times, even if it is to benefit their own interests. Yes, we'll approve the building of a new sewer system for the slums so the poor people aren't wading through sewage, as long as you bring back fox hunting. But Grantham, though, he just sits back and is happy to use all the privileges that come with his standing, occasionally trying to push his vile morals onto the people. There was this one bill he tried to push, though, and that was calling for the ban of all dwarves in the city. Really? What a cock. Completely. Stuck in the past, rude, disrespectful, ignorant. Thankfully, his proposal was laughed out of the parliament in seconds, if only because the dwarven presence in the city boosts the economy. Look at him over there laughing with those women. Ugh. If Merelda was right about one thing, it's that you can't just go over there, fists waving. You need to be smart. Grantham hasn't got much power, but he's still in the government. It'll take a lot to unseat him. You could try leaking to the press, getting it out there before he has time to offer a rebuttal. Or you could... Sorry, Merelda. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Wait. And it's because of this. That's why you can't bring alcohol into work anymore. Lord Grantham? Yes. (coughs) And yet, uh... So, you've been up to some naughty stuff, haven't you? How dare you lay your hands on me, you filthy creature! Ah. Arrest her! Wait, wait. Now, you've been paying hired goons to assault and harass elves, haven't you, Grantham? Haven't you? I don't have to speak to you. You've just assaulted a government minister. I have a pardon, exonerating me from most moderate crimes. Cop that. It's not really a get-out-of-jail-free card. Is what she saying true, Grantham? Yes. One thing you morons haven't realised is that someone needs to put them in line. If I had it my way, I'd have all you subhumans rounded up and shot. Go back to the good old days when they had your heads cut off and entrails strung across the castle walls. Your kind have it coming. That and worse. How very, very lovely of you. Temel, do you know how to pick plums? I don't, no. You simply grasp them firmly (coughs) and twist. (coughs) The city guard stepped in then and I was pulled away from Grantham. He was hauled off to the infirmary to have his wounds treated but my message was clear and people took notice. Grantham's actions were blasted by an overwhelming majority and he was publicly branded as a bigot, inciting hate crimes. Despite this, he didn't end up losing his job and he was demoted and stripped of the many privileges and luxuries he had become accustomed to. Oh, and what about you? You beat up a politician, in public, of all places. And I got away with it too. Oh, come off it. That pardon came in handy. I was even thanked for bringing the information to light, but I was told never to do anything like that again. No pardon could protect me from that in the future. I'd just have to be more cunning. I won't go into the story now. I returned home a few hours later to find Merelda waiting for me. Howdy. Hello. You doing all right? I'm better, thank you. This place is very quiet for a pub. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate, that. Business is slow at times. Did it? Grantham's actions are now public knowledge. People are disgusted he's been held accountable for what he did. I'm glad to hear. And all done without you getting in trouble. Yeah, I did the right thing. Um, 
Anyway, sorry. Yeah, um, you've been left here for hours. Do you want me to escort you back to where you're staying? Actually, I'm staying here now. Charlotte offered me a room and she's arranged for my belongings to be brought over. Oh, that's nice of her. So you're not completely turned off being around me after all that earlier? I thought I'd scare you off. Earlier was a shock to me. I've recovered, but I understand your intentions were honourable. They always are. Usually. Most of the time. My intentions are always honourable. Now I can just relax, knowing that Grantham's dealt with. Those two boys are out of the fridge and back home, and I hopefully shouldn't face any more... Oh, shoot! I left them both in the fridge! Oh, this is so uncool. Both of them survived, don't worry. Cole's mother was far from impressed with either of them. She made them pay back all the money Grantham had given them, disgracing him further and losing them both their jobs. There's probably some political commentary of some sort in there, isn't there? Anyway, Miralda returned to her market and dealt with no more trouble for the rest of her stay. Things only got crazy again a few weeks later with those animal people in the woods. In the exciting adventures of... Well, we'll save that until next time. But that is the end of the story. Oh, how marvellous. What a wonderful work of fiction. So you don't believe me then? Not at all. This is absolute nonsense. Really, do you expect us to believe any of that? I do. Here's your proof. 23rd of the 4th, 1779, politician Peter Grantham publicly assaulted by a disgruntled elven woman admits to hate crimes. Well, I never. And you thought I was making it up. Well, your storytelling methods still leave a lot to be desired. You can't just be happy, can you? Not exactly. Not when you keep barging in here and taking over my storytelling. Okay, one, this is only the second time I've been in here. Two, your stories are dull and conventional. Three, Richard III is historically inaccurate. The Misadventures of Anietta DeVoe, written by Royce Pentagast. Starring Olivia Brzezinski as Anietta DeVoe, Robbie Bleakley as the narrator, Holly Gregg as Merelda, Marie Butler Cole as Charlotte, Stuart Fulton as Grantham, Aaron Beck as Tehran, Matt Harris as Cole, and Royce Pentagast as Termel. Additional voices by Diane Smith, Joshua Law and Aaron Beck. Theme music, the copyright of Matt Harris. Additional music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Produced by Rabbit Dog 8 and Launceston City Park Radio 2017.